What's up guys? Welcome to Throttle Channel. Today I've got a weird one for you. Go ahead and kick off a little project that I've been wanting to do for a couple months now for the FD. And it's basically a headlight upgrade. Um, one thing about the RX-7s is the stock halogen lighting is really lousy. Um, so I've been wanting to do a proper HID kit upgrade with a projector lens which is the only proper way to do an LED light or HID light upgrade. Uh, otherwise, if you're using a scatter lens headlight and an LED or a, hal or a sorry, HID bulb, you're basically just scattering light all over. And those are the cars you see on the freeway that have the really bright lights in your eyes all the time. Uh, it's an improper setup. And so I wanna do this and I wanna show you guys sort of a proper way to do a, a headlight retrofit Again, I'm no expert. Uh, I've been around this stuff for a long time and I've actually done a couple of my own retrofits. If you've seen my EG, you know that I have a retrofit on there that I did myself. It's very unique. So what we have here is a set of Spider Auto RX-7 replacement housings. And these do not have the scatter shield, as you can see. Uh, it's a clear crystal lens and that's what you'll need to do a proper upgrade. Um, here we have the ballast and I'll tell you more about those in a minute. We've got our Osram uh, 6000K cool blue headlight bulbs that go into these sockets here. We have our wiring kit. We have our new HID housings um, and lenses. And these have the high low beam cutoffs in here. This is a upgraded version, a new updated version um, that has a really nice cutoff for the high low beam. And then we have also our, this is basically the, the beauty ring that goes around this so that when you look through the front of the headlight, you don't just see this ugly thing. Um, this actually snaps on, it's in a plastic bag right now, but this actually clips on to the front of the light and it um, is meant to make it look a little more pretty. Uh, I did go with a, it's called a Golf, I think a Golf GTI or sorry, a Golf R version. So it's similar to what, it, what you'd find in a Golf R. And what I liked about it was it had this little eyebrow. So I'm hoping it'll add a little bit of meanness look to the, to the headlight itself. So you're probably wondering how you get these inside of here. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to heat these up, remove these four clips. There's two underneath, two on top. And then there's a sealing glue or seal in there and we'll pop the face off. At that point, this threaded portion of the HID projector uh, will need to fit through the back here. Uh, so essentially it'll go in from the front, this will poke out through the back, and then it comes with some mounting hardware to fasten everything onto here. Um, I'm probably gonna, since these are pretty deep, I'm probably gonna need to remove a bunch of material off the back of the light housing. So, this is definitely a trial and error setup. Um, as I said, I've done this before, so I've got a little bit of a head start. Um, and I've also got a good friend of mine who owns a company called Vision Auto Lab. You can check him out on Instagram. He does um, BMW, Porsche, and Tesla uh, headlight upgrades for people. Um, so if you have any of those cars and you're interested in a headlight upgrade, Vision Auto Lab on Instagram is the guy you'll want to go see. Uh, he also has a couple of rad BMW wagons that are M5 clones. Uh, so if you're into that sort of thing, go give him a shout on, uh, on Instagram. One thing that I want to talk about were these ballasts. So I told you guys I wanted to build a kit that was sort of a budget kit. So I'm not spending $1,400 on a headlight upgrade. Uh, I don't mind putting in the work uh, to save some money. So I went ahead and talked to my buddy at Vision Auto Lab, Evan. And he told me that I could get these ballasts, which are really good. He called them tanks. So meaning they're very durable and they'll last for a long time. And so basically these are from the junkyard uh, and you can find those on, basically it's a gen three ballast and you can find them on late nineties to mid 2000s BMWs and Audis. So if you're in the junkyard and you see like say an E39, um, and the ballasts are still in it, snag them because they're great for these type of retrofits if, if you're in the market to do one. Um, by using these ballasts, you can pick them up at the junkyard for pennies on the dollar instead of paying 
a lot from a, a retrofit company or um, you know getting some China brand type stuff that is going to potentially fail. Uh, whereas these are an OE part. You know how I like my OE parts, and they'll last a bit longer. So those are awesome ballasts. Um, the wiring kit is going to plug right into all this stuff. We do have to wire in our our high beam cutoff, which is here. But these um, projectors actually come with the wiring in this little bag right here. So we just have to pin that in and then hook it up to the harness. And I guess the major, the most amount of work that needs to be done here is actually clearancing the headlight housings for the, the um, HID projector housing. So I'm going to go ahead and sit down and get started on that. I'm going to sort of suss out the tools I need as I go. I'm definitely going to need a grinder tool and probably going to be cutting off some of the back of this light. So there's going to be quite a bit of trimming and also I need to use a heat gun to open up the lights. Now a lot of people use an oven at about 225 degrees to open up the lights. I don't have an oven here at the shop so I'm going to make do with a heat gun and just sneak up on it slowly, get it soft and pull those off. And I'll show you guys how I do it all. Alright, so as you saw, I was able to get the front lens off. Uh, one thing you want to do with these lenses, they're very susceptible to scratches, especially on the inside I've found. Uh, with the last set I did, it was actually glass, but a previous set I did was plastic lens like this. Uh, I'll wrap them in cellophane. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, put them away. We won't be needing these for a while until we start test fitting the, um, the projectors in the housings for clearances. Uh, it's good to just leave them wrapped in that cellophane until you're done, otherwise they can get pretty screwed up. I wanted to take a quick second and tell you guys about Philo, which I'm watching here on my laptop while I'm wrenching on the Bad Apple with Ricky. We're watching Wheeler Dealers today. We like to put on some content while we're wrenching. I also like to watch ice hockey out here, as well as all my favorite programming on History Channel, Motor Trend TV, all of these great channels, which are available on Philo. I ditched my cable a couple months ago, and I've never looked back. Philo has been rad for me. I can record programs that I miss on the daily and watch them at night when I get home or when I'm done here at the shop. What's awesome is you get 44 channels or more actually than 44 channels for $16 a month. You can't beat that, cable can't touch it, and you get to watch all your programming whenever you want. So if you want to save a heap of money, click the link in the description below. Join Fuel today simply by inputting your cell phone number, they'll send you a sign up link, use the seven day free trial, and find out what Fuel is all about. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised as I was. I'll be a Fuel user for a long time. Peace out, cable. Thank you so much to Philo for sponsoring this video. Without them, it's not possible. As you guys know, it takes a lot of money to run this shop and uh, to build these cars for you guys. Support our sponsors. Thank you, Philo. Click the link below. Last thing you want to do is ruin these nice lenses. After you've done all the work putting the projectors and you put these on, they look like they're all scratched up. So I'm going to go do that now with this one. And I'm going to go ahead and get the other lens off as well. And then we can start cutting into these housings and seeing how to get these HID lights into them. All right, so I've grabbed our HID, HID projector and our housing. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this through here. In a normal retrofit, you would be able to just put this in use the mounting provisions and tighten all this down and put your lens back on potentially and go. As you can see here, that's the protrusion of our HID projector. As you can see, that's quite a bit more than what our front clear lens is going to allow for. So we've got to sink this, we've got to sink this back in the housing further so that we've only got um, probably just the lens sticking out from the front about like that 
So in order to clearance this out for this, we're gonna get into probably this area here, which is an oblong oval shape. So I'm gonna start taking a little bit of the back of this housing away at a time. Uh, I wanna get a nice flat surface here to mount on. And what's cool about these HID uh, projectors is that they have some mounting holes on the flange here. So what I'll probably do is utilize these as mounting holes and run some uh, some hardware through the back of the light in four places, and then hard mount this inside instead of using this instead of using this uh, screw-in provision. Even though this is easy, this is probably better. job guys um, went ahead and got rid of that shield off of here so now this is nice and round uh, I think what I'm gonna do is actually go back over to the side sander and get rid of the rest of this lump off the back all right quick update I went ahead and removed that off the back so now you can see there's just a little ledge I'm just gonna sneak up on it as slow as I can um, didn't want to remove too much material because I don't want to so we're gonna stop here and start doing our oval shape to get the back of the uh, housing in. All right, so I've successfully got our HID light mounted inside of our, our spider housing. And right at the moment, it looks a little ghetto. I definitely just used some whatever screws we had laying around just to get it mounted in here. We'll be going back and revisiting the hardware. Obviously, this isn't gonna fly. But just wanted to see where we were at. And I think we're in pretty good shape. It looks like the the beauty ring or the surround for the for the uh, projector itself is going to need to see quite a bit of trimming as well so I'll start playing with that once I have confirmation that we've got enough room inside of our headlight area to house this uh, extra width or depth that we've built into this headlight it's actually not that much because if you remember the you can see on this light um, Actually, we're in really good shape, so I was kind of worried, but it only sticks out about an inch more. So, we're in pretty good shape. Pretty happy about that. So I think I'm going to start modifying the other one as well. Uh, I don't have the car with me today, so I can't check, test fit anything. So I don't want to get too far down the path, because if we do have a fitment issue somewhere, I don't want to have made these headlights for no reason. So, all right guys, so fast forward to the next day. I've gone ahead and cut up the other headlight as well so that they're matching. Uh, we're making some good progress. Here's the other one here. Uh, it is ready to go into the car as well for test fitment purposes. This one in particular, I already have the bulb in and the fastener that holds the bulb in place. And the reason that is, it's a little early for bulbs, right? But when you do this, you want to have a vehicle available, whether it's the one that the lights are going into or another one, uh, such as this one here. This is Ricky and Helen's FD. They've been kind enough to let me pull the headlight, the stock headlight, out of their FD so that I can test with this one without tearing my car apart. Thank you, guys. That's rad of you. Um, so essentially, now I need to make sure that we have clearance because this is sticking out pretty far from the back of the existing light, uh, quite a bit further than how a normal uh, halogen bulb would stick out. So I wanna make sure we have clearances there. And so now we can do that by utilizing this car here. And if you guys aren't familiar with what a stock FD headlight looks like, that's what it looks like. This is what our new headlight's gonna look like, although it's covered in sanding dust at the moment. Um, this is a standard scatter lens. If you put an HID or an LED behind that, you will be blinding everyone on the road. Not a cool thing to do. So on this particular car, the headlights mount on these tabs here. Um, 
This is really difficult with one hand. Uh, but what we want to do is check for clearance back here. As you can see, it's pretty tight. Um, the nice thing is, is these are composite buckets, so we can probably trim this. We can probably trim some of this bucket out here. Um, currently, it's not touching. I know it's hard for you guys to tell the depth, but currently we don't have any clearance issues. Uh, we're actually clearing the whole thing, which is great. Um, but on mine, I know for a fact that I will want to trim probably this section because we still have to put the HID ballast connection on the back of the bulb here and that will run down and we'll probably bury our ballast up under here or maybe even down here somewhere um, out of sight out of mind that way it's a nice clean installation and now this is the stock wiring this is still used um, this actually is where we get our power and ground from for the stock ballast so that will be um, that will be put in or that will be retained on my car as well and sort of hidden up out of the way, which is nice because it's pretty ugly wiring. Um, but I'm very happy with the way this is turning out. Um, this is basically how it's going to look. I think it's a great look. Um, keep in mind, we will be putting a bezel around the, the, HID, ball or the HID headlight itself uh, that will clean up the look, and you won't see any of that stuff back behind there. So... Now that we know that we're, we're going to be fitting okay, we can go ahead and start trimming the, the trim surrounds that go around the beauty rings basically that fit into the headlight. And essentially we're just going to trim away enough until it snaps on and locks into place. Anyway boys, so we're going to move on to getting these bezels uh, trimmed up so that they fit on the headlights. At that point we can uh, put the headlights on the car and then I want to start playing with the aiming of them. Once they're aimed, at that point I can go ahead and uh, probably pop the, uh, the front covers back on these after they're all cleaned up and um, all the plastic dust is removed. So a little bit of a lengthy process, but it, hey, at the end of the day, a pair of these headlights from an online retailer is about 1400 bucks. I'm doing this for 300 bucks plus my time which is well, money well spent in my opinion, time well spent. It's a big savings. That means I can go buy extra uh, Cokes and Twix for Ricky, which is a good thing. dandy rotary tool that I use a lot. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and buzz this out of here real quick and then uh, do another test of it. All right, so I got everything cut out in here. Uh, as you can see, I just trimmed out this little pocket. Um, this is like a composite plastic, so it likes to melt when you cut it. And there are strands of fiber in here, so there's little strings, so to speak, that are inserted into the plastic, so it's, I guess, more durable. So that's cleared now, and now we can get the back of the light actually in there, which is pretty cool. Plenty of room, plenty of clearance back here now. And we can go ahead and put the harness on and uh, put the back of the bulb harness uh, up through the bottom and make sure that we have enough clearance for all that. So far so good. What I've done is I've actually went ahead and used some 3M tape on this ballast and I've got a, a place picked out down here in the corner where that's going to mount up against the side rail here and the bottom rail, well, straight down, which you can see right there. Then I have to hang this and this is a, um, this is a relay. This has to hang straight up and down in there. I think I have a really nice spot for it right here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to sink it there and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so the ballast is mounted in place. That's where that's gonna sit right there. As you can see, it's nice and stable there. I am probably gonna go ahead and loop a zip tie around it just for good measure. 
3M tape is ultra durable, but I like to just be safe, just in case it does ever let loose. Maybe it gets moisture behind it or something, I don't know, and it lets loose. I don't want that ballast to fall down into the wheel well or anything like that. So I just go ahead and put a zip tie around it to secure it for good measure. I don't know, call me weird, but something I like to do. All right guys, I didn't want to bore you with the, the final wiring deal, but uh, I went ahead and finished the passenger side wiring and I've gone ahead and got the headlight in. Uh, it's mounted up. One thing I didn't show you was you have to wire up your high beam uh, trigger, I guess. So when you click your high beam stock inside the car, it sends a signal to the, the, uh, the new projector housing. Uh, we've got the ballast hooked up. This is still loose for adjustment purposes. These are still, these are temporary as well. Those will get changed out to nicer hardware. Once we get everything aligned. What I've been told by my friend at Vision Auto Lab, Evan, is that you want to get everything mocked up and then try it first. Once you get everything sort of ready to go, uh, get, it, get them put in the car and then do your test on a garage door or whatever from 25 feet. See where you are, make sure everything's aligned properly. And then you can go back and do your final steps, which is using the appropriate hardware, uh, making any cuts or trims that you still need to make. Uh, at that point, you're basically free to tie up all your wiring, your loose ends, and cut your surrounds for your HID lamps themselves so that you have the, the pretty bezel on there. At any rate, here's how they look, boys. I think it looks pretty sick. Uh, now it's time to get everything cleaned up. Want to use a lot of liquid, and I'm using Windex at a nice clean, uh, microfiber Woo. Um, with a lot a lot of of glass cleaner because you won't, don't want to scratch these the chrome plating on the plastic is very fragile so if you rub too hard you will scratch the inner and you will see it so be very cautious So I used a two-part, uh, it's called Super Steel. This one's actually from, it's a 10 minute repair epoxy. It's actually from Loctite. And so what you do is you actually just cut a piece off, mix it together, and as it mixes, it hardens in about 10 minutes. What I'll do is go back and cut these studs off and uh, shorten them so that they look a little bit nicer. Keep in mind, none of this is visible once these are in the car, but what's important is that you do create a good seal. So this stuff, say what you want, it may not look the greatest, but it does the job that it's meant to do, and it's gonna work out fantastic for this project, so. All right, so I've gone ahead and allowed the uh, super steel to harden up. Went ahead and sealed it up with some Loctite uh, instant gasket, which is just a, a rubber gasket sealer uh, as well. This is how it looks when it's all done. As you can see, I've gone ahead and sealed these up with a silicone around the hole there, as well as there. And then I sealed the edge of the super steel all the way around um, so that no water can get behind the super steel and that is the end result. Now what I can do is go back and cut these off uh, a little shorter, more like how this one is here, and we should be good to go. Uh, these things are, you know, it's not pretty, that's for sure, but at the end of the day, that's something you don't see, and I'm pretty happy with it, so. Several days later. Uh, you wanna see what they look like? Let's do it. Hey, wow, you're in the 21st century now. It's gonna be really hard to kind of get this on camera, but those look really sick. 
You'd think if that car was behind you, that's like a modern new car. That was the idea. Yeah, it looks like really cool. What's cool is these are by Xenon, so as I showed you guys previously, the when you flick the headlights to bright mode, they actually do get brighter, and the little gates drop down and lighten up the road a lot more. Really love the way this brighten up the front of the car. It looks so much better than it did before, and the details are really cool in there. So that's that boys. Thank you for tagging along on this journey of these headlights. It was a bit of a process just because I couldn't get it all done in a day or two. Um, would I do it again? You bet your ass I would. I really like the way it turned out and it saved me heaps of money, um, 12 to $1,400 retail for a set of these bolt in from some of the suppliers out there. I have about 1300 all in. I will go ahead in the description below and put a parts list of all the parts I use so that if you wanna do this yourself, and remember, it doesn't need to be an FDRX7. It could be any car. You just have to get the right headlight housings and then get all the bits. You can use my list down below and do your own. So thanks for joining, guys. Hopefully it wasn't too long and boring. We appreciate all your subscriptions, your comments, your likes. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time, hopefully with more FD content. Peace out. What's up Throttle fam, A Brad here. I really quickly just want to tell you how the VR4, Vader VR4, can get from our garage to your garage. So you have to be a Throttle VIP member. The link is in the description. Go check it out. What does that mean? I mean, say you go to Advanced Auto Parts, 20% off. The car giveaway is a cherry on top. When you buy your car parts through Throttle, up to 40% off, we don't price match, we price beat. Your first purchase alone will cover your membership fee. Support us, we love all of our Throttle VIP members, sincerely. This car is absolutely legendary. Whoever gets this thing, oh, I'm so jealous.